Hi everyone, I'm Giovanni Laquidara from the Developer Relations team, and I'm excited to share the latest developer experience updates from the Amazon App Store. Joining me today is my colleague Priya. Hello, I'm Priya Rajan and I'm a Senior Solutions Architect for Amazon App Store. I will join in the second part of this talk to show you the redesigned app submission workflow and key updates for live app testing. I'll start with why the developer experience is essential for both App Store developers and customers. We know that millions of customers are installing apps through the Amazon App Store, and they expect a smooth user flow for installing, buying, and launching new digital products. It's essential for us to provide ongoing developers and performance improvements. This contributes to a seamless setup that helps your customer get started on your app right away. To support the full app development lifecycle, we are sharing product updates for each stage of building building and porting apps, testing, submitting, and finally launching your app. Before I continue, if you are new to building with the Amazon App Store, here's a quick refresher. FireOS, our device operating system, is based on the Android open source project. Existing apps built for Android with Java, Kotlin, React Native, Flutter, and other cross-platform frameworks can be ported to the Amazon App Store for multiple devices. For example, Fire TVs, Fire Tablets, Echo Show, in current Entertainment, and now Windows 11. Our SDKs and APIs make it possible for developers to build up for Amazon customers around the world. Now let's go over the first stage in the App Store development lifecycle, building and porting apps. When developers are building or porting their apps, they first consider what changes are needed to bring new and existing Android apps to the Amazon App Store. When porting an app, it's important to consider which frameworks and open source library are used in your app. Gather workflows are detailed compatibility reports to outline the level of effort required to launch your app on the Amazon App Store. They provide multiple integration options, so you can choose the best approach by comparing the technical feature to off. You can get up and running quickly with these workflows. After answering just a few functional questions about your app, you will receive thorough technical guidance. Our guided workflows will help you quickly determine app compatibility with Amazon App Store for these common requirements. Cloud messaging and push notification in your apps are covered. We have several paths available through Amazon Device Messaging, Amazon SNS, Amazon Pinpoint, and abstraction layers for features such as topic and group-based messaging. In-app purchasing is critical for growing revenue, and this workflow covers how to migrate from Google Play Billing Library to Amazon App Store SDK and in-app purchasing. Location services are essential for apps that require device geo capabilities. This workflow shows how to incorporate geolocation with tools such as Amazon Amplified Geo, Amazon Maps, increasing your ability to target personalized offers. Authentication is our latest workflow aimed at making it easier to provide login with Amazon for developers that have previously implemented authentication with Google Play. You can explore any of these guided workflows from the developer console at developer.amazon.com apps. Next up, we will walk you through our set of SDKs that will help you reduce the maintenance burden of supporting multiple App Store and OS dependencies. With our App Store abstraction libraries, which we refer to as A3L, developers can now support the same functionality across multiple app store and services through a unified SDK. Let's walk through the latest updates for A3L messaging SDK and the new A3L authentication SDK. To launch an Android app, you can use Firebase Cloud Messaging to send push notifications and messages with Google Play services and Amazon device messaging for Fire OS. The A3L Messaging SDK abstracts dependencies on Firebase Cloud Messaging for Android and Amazon Device Messaging for Fire OS. This enables you to build one consistent customer experience across Android and Amazon devices. These messaging services offer similar features, and with A3L you can now support both in your apps. Let's see how this works in code. Here's a section of code written for Firebase Cloud Message. You extend from Firebase Messaging Service and override the methods to handle the message received or the refresh of the token. Here's a comparable block for code with A3L that achieves this functionality across Android and Amazon devices. In this case, you will have to extend from A3L Messaging Services, overriding the methods code with the same names you are used to. 
by using this class both Firebase and Amazon device customers receive their notification and messages with A3L messaging SDK and you only do the work once. Now that we have set up A3L messaging, you will be able to implement this feature across Fire OS and Google Play. Next, I'll cover the latest feature updates for messaging. We have added topic-based messaging and group-based messaging feature to expand support for the most common messaging use cases. With topic-based messaging, you can now send messages to multiple devices that are subscribed to a particular topic. Simply compose the messages and let A3L and Amazon Domains messaging and do the rest. For example, Users of a weather forecasting app can now opt in into a location-specific topic and receive updates for their chosen location. Another example is video streaming media app users, who can subscribe to genres of interest and receive automatic notifications for new releases in those genres. With group message messaging, you can streamline communications. For example, you can target customers on different Fire TV device models about a special promotion with one message. To send one message that can reach multiple devices, simply group the device with a single API call. Group membership is managed by the app server to ensure you send your messages to the approved group. Our A3L developer docs cover the full list of capabilities and feature parities for Firebase messaging, Amazon device messaging, and the A3L abstraction. In addition, read through the Getting Started guides and download the SDK. Next up is the new A3L Authentication SDK that lets developers authenticate users with Google sign-in and login with Amazon on both Google Play and Amazon App Store. Any app built using A3L Authentication SDK can now provide the sign-in experience on both devices without any code changes. The SDK is aimed to provide an identical flow to Google sign-in, meaning no need for customers to onboard and learn a different path. As you can see, Android apps with existing Google sign-in feature are now able to quickly support Amazon device customers with this update. Once you have ported your app to Fire OS, it's time to experience your apps on Amazon devices. Let's talk about the second stage of the App Store development cycle, testing. Developers build and test apps right within Android Studio. Just as with Android device developer option, you can set any Fire tablet in developer mode to silo new and updates App bundles. For testing and locally deploying apps to Fire TV through Wi Fi, developers can use Android Debug Bridge or ADB. ADB is a popular Android command line tool for developers to install and debug apps over network connection. Another developer tool available for Fire TV testing is the System X ray feature. System X ray is available on all Amazon Fire TV and Fire TV Sticks devices with Fire OS in the Developer Tool menu. The system X-ray overlay remains in place as you change apps or navigate around on the Amazon Fire TV and is comprised of four sections. Display shows the pixel dimension, refresh rate, and digital content encryption in use. CPU shows the percentage of GPU usage of each core of the device at real time with different colors. Memory shows the memory usage, package name, and available memory in the devices. This is useful for detecting memory leaks and consumption on the devices. Networks show the strength on the Wi-Fi signal along with the download rates across the entire device and for the visible app. Now Priya will cover some additional developer experience updates for the App Store development lifecycle. Over to you Priya. Thanks Gio. The last developer tool for testing that I'll talk about is Live App Testing, also called LAT. This tool allows you to gather feedback, improve quality, increase stability, and optimize the experience before you publish your app live for customers to download. LAT is critical to verify integrations like in-app purchasing, Facebook integration and connectivity, Amazon device messaging, and Amazon Maps. Most importantly, LAT enables you to publish an app for a limited set of testers by controlling where your test version gets deployed, your app can be installed on a controlled set of testing group users. You can create a test with the live or production app flow, and a key benefit for developers is that the production app will be reflective of the end customer experience. We are improving the experience for our live app testing tool 
to give developers more control and testing options prior to releasing new app versions for customers. With Quick LAT, we have simplified the test creation experience by cutting down the metadata required for a single test down to the essentials. Users can now set up a test in just a one-page form. In addition to simplifying test creation, we have improved the experience to invite testers. You can now invite testers multiple times using the Resend Invite button on the Manage Testers page. Testing groups have a revised flow where developers can accept testing invitations from within the developer console. When segmenting testing for new app versions, you are improving the overall experience for your customers while reducing unexpected surprises after major releases. We are bringing improvements to Quick LAT in the near future and are inviting beta testers for the upcoming changes. Okay, we've covered a lot for porting and testing. Now I'll cover stage three of the App Store development lifecycle, App Submissions. We have made a major developer experience update within the App Store Developer Console, which we call Seamless Submission. Seamless Submission is our redesigned four-step submission workflow to provide a straightforward navigation and clear status updates throughout the process of submitting apps. We launched Seamless Submission to reduce the number of steps required and to make it easier to manage and update your products. Whether you're preparing to submit to the Amazon App Store for the first time or you're updating your existing app, I highly recommend you go through the Amazon App Store pre-submission checklist. Some of our developers have found success by building this pre-submission checklist into the app update process to ensure a smooth workflow. The pre-submission checklist covers essential areas our app reviewers will be looking for. Content, functionality, IP, testing instructions, and supported devices. Before submitting your app, use this checklist to double check that your app meets the requirements and guidelines. Once submission is complete and your app is approved, you'll reach the final stage of the App Store development lifecycle, launching your app. Thank you for watching and listening to our developer updates for the Amazon App Store. We hope you are walking away with better knowledge of developer tools and all the developer experience updates we have made to improve each stage of the App Store development lifecycle. If you'd like to ask questions or have any follow-ups, join us in the Dev Lounge to continue the conversation. We look forward to build with you.